All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, our reading of Rich and Righteous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said a twenty dollar bookmark. Yeah, I actually need to change it to a hundred dollars because the book is actually a hundred dollars. Um, but uh, we are continuing our reading of Rich and Righteous. Um, about a week ago, God uh, nudged me and said, you know, uh, it's time for you to read your book aloud to people. And I've already done the audio book and everything like that. But uh, I wrote this book originally uh, at the beginning of uh, COVID because I knew that the world was going to shift into poverty consciousness. And I'd already been through that season in my life because I started my company. I quit my job January 9th, 2009, at the bottom of the last recession. And uh, it's been uh, an upward journey since in terms of results, not an uphill battle, but an upward journey in terms of results. And so um, this book was divinely downloaded through me um, in order to help people navigate the shifts in the external economic environment and bringing us back to our true self and our inward environment and making sure that that is sound because uh, what is within manifests without as above, so below, right? So as above in our minds, so below in terms of our earthly experience. And so um, I wrote this at the beginning of COVID and, um, and uh, we reached a lot of people with the book in terms of those who bought it. Um, but as the world or collective consciousness uh, starts speaking about a recession, uh, now, and you see tech stocks dropping and things of that nature, um, the uh, the spirit just moved me and said, just read it out loud every single day. And so right now we're reading primarily at 8.30 a.m. I'm actually on the West Coast right now, and I have to travel uh, at 8.30. I have to leave at 8.30. So I'm here about a half an hour early today, um, but we'll continue the journey at 8.30 a.m. because the West Coast is actually 5.30 <laughs> Uh, it's 5.10 now, but um, we'll be reading at 5.30 a.m. while I'm on the West Coast. Um, and then uh, once I get back to the East Coast, we'll switch back to um, uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. So uh, you're not required to get the book. Um, you can just listen along. Um, but if you do want the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com moneyandmanifestation.com and you can go get the book. Uh, it, you'll get it's one hundred dollars. OK. But you get five copies. It's a hundred dollars, but you get five copies when you get the book. Why do I do that? Because the ultimate goal is to put you in an immediate state of circulation, right? If you want to receive, you have to give. You give and you shall receive. A lot of these principles are in the Bible. And what I've been able to do is extract the financial principles from the Bible and break them down in a way, uh, in a way to make them useful to you because abundance is your birthright and you are a child of God. And so this is uh, basically the financial Bible right here. <laughs> if you think about rich dad, poor dad, the Bible, as a man thinketh, um, as a man thinketh and um, think and grow rich, all of that has been weaved into one single book right here. And uh, in case you wonder, this is not some little ebook. <laughs> this is not some little ebook that got divinely downloaded. It's me. It was twice as thick as this. All right. And so um, we're reading today in the section called um, we're actually on page six and we are reading in the section called what is money right and why do we have to ask, ask the question what is money um you have to understand the nature of something that you truly want if you truly want something you have to understand its nature okay and so we need to just pause rather than just being out here chasing money right we need to pause and ask ourselves what is money what is its nature and once i understand its nature guess what it's going to be easier for me to attract it so if i'm a hunter and in fact that's probably not the best analogy, but I'll run with it because we don't ever chase money. Hunters chase, right? Actually, bad hunters chase, okay? They're over here running after things. But good hunters, what do they do? They understand the nature of the thing that they're trying to capture, and they allow that thing to come to them. Does that make sense? Bad hunters, they chase. Whereas great hunters, they understand the nature of that thing, and they know where that thing is going to be and they can intercept it there. OK, and so this is why we're exploring the nature of money. And I, I know that's probably a weird question. Like, what is money? Like money's in my life every single day, but I have uh, money's in my life every single day. But I've never paused to ask, what is money and what is its nature? So that's what we're doing. We're seeking to understand its nature. If I'm uh, if I'm hunting lions, right, I'm not going to be chasing after lions. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to understand the nature of a lion when it sleeps, when it moves, where it hunts. Um, I'm going to understand. I'm going to understand what it eats, um, uh, how it navigates, how it walks. I'm going to understand its nature, and then I will camouflage myself in that nature, 
right, in its environment, and then therefore be able to capture it when it least expects it. Okay, so we want to become attractive to money. We're not racing after money. That is one of the lies that you were told in the American dream is that you're supposed to chase money. We out here paper chasing. No, we're not. I'm not. And money is flowing to me freely, frequently, and abundantly every single day without the chase. And I know that's very hard for many people to comprehend um, when you are in the rat race, when you are chasing money. But once you get to the other side, and you're going to only get to the other side through your consciousness, you're only going to get to the other side through your consciousness, you'll see that, wow. This is what I was doing all this time. I was chasing money. I was running after it because anything you chase has power over you. Anything you chase has power over you. So we don't chase. Instead, we say, what does money want? We know that you want money. But instead of standing in, oh, I just want more money, right? Because what does scripture say? In the Lord's prayer, it says what? Thou shalt not what? Thou shall not want. I know that that puts that scripture in a lot more perspective now. Thou shall not want. As a child of God, you should never be in a state of wanting. You should never be in a state of wanting, right? In fact, you become attractive and that thing wants you. You become attractive from an energetic frequency standpoint. I don't care how you look in the mirror, right? You become attractive from an energetic and frequency standpoint. And what happens is that thing now naturally wants you. All right. So uh, if you're just joining us, we're reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation and and uh, your mind. And so. <laughs> um, and so uh, let's let's continue. <laughs> Numberless. OK, so. We're looking at the acronym for money right now. We're looking at the acronym for money. And uh, yesterday we covered magnetic and objective, right? So from a magnetic standpoint, money attracts more money when it is charged, okay? To be charged, it must be in motion. This is why we call money currency, okay? I'm going to read that again from the magnetic section, which is money attracts more money, okay? It just naturally does. So it has a magnetic energy in it. And to be charged, it must be in motion, so money sitting in your savings account doing nothing, it's not charged. That's why you're only getting 0.03% um, interest on your savings account, okay? It's not charged. But when money is in motion and in the world circulating, because we're not here to accumulate money, we're here to circulate money. The wealthiest people <laughs> circulate money, okay? This is why we call money currency. This is why we call money currency, because it's supposed to have a current. It's supposed to be moving. But most people are actually saving money out of fear. That's what people do in a recession. In a recession, money slows down in terms of its motion and movement. And that is actually what could, puts us into recession is because we stop it from flowing. The fear causes us to stop money from flowing because we don't know if, oh, I'm going to have a job uh, in a month. We don't know uh, what prices or inflation are going to look like. We don't know what's going to happen, right? And so we stop, uh, we stop allowing money to flow. And then this is how we collectively enter into a state of recession. Now we're in a swamp. The water's not flowing anymore. Okay. And so uh, if we just collectively keep the money flowing, then guess what? There will be no recession. If we keep the money flowing, not to not to expenses and liabilities, right? But if we keep money circulating towards ideals, ideas, individuals, institutions, and investments that we believe in, guess what? There will be no recession. There will be no recession. OK, and so um, the next thing is that money is objective. So M, we're doing the acronym for money. M was magnetic. O is objective. OK, money is neither good nor bad. Just like a knife is neither good nor bad. OK. A knife can be used for good. It can be used for bad. If a knife can be used to cut bread, it can use to be stabbed to use to stab somebody. But a knife is neither good nor bad. The intention behind who is using it and how they are using it determines whether it has a positive or negative charge. So I know a lot of people have religious hangups around money, thinking that money is the root of all evil. That's the evil substance. There's people out there who hate capitalism, okay? But if capitalism is simply value exchange, if we just take it back to its basic form, is there corrupt capitalism? Yes, that puts uh, profit over people, that puts this piece of paper over people. Yes, there's corrupt capitalism. But at its root, 
capitalism is not negative. It's just a way of exchanging value. Okay. Uh, the example we gave yesterday was, um, or the day before was I have a hundred apples and you have one cow and you wanted 20 apples and I didn't want 20% of your cow in that moment. And so what do we do? We wrote an IOU that said, I owe you the equivalent of 20% of a cow later on. So this piece of paper made exchange easier. So I don't have to walk around all day with my apples and you don't have to walk around all day with your cows, right? We can delay just because you wanted the apples in that moment and I didn't want a cow, we wouldn't be able to exchange. So money made it easier for us to facilitate the exchange and circulation, right? And so money is objective. So we're going to get into the N, the E, and the Y now. The N, the E, and the Y, okay? We're on page seven. For those of you who have the book, if you would like to get the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. Moneyandmanifestation.com. We normally are going to be reading at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, but I have to travel today. Um, so I am here about half an hour early um, today, okay? So in numberless, money is abundant. It cannot be, it can't be counted. The amount of money available depends on our individual collective faith. Did you hear that? The amount of money available depends on our individual and collective faith. If we don't believe in each other, okay? The only thing that gives this thing value is our belief in it. So if we don't believe, and this actually represents our belief in each other. I believe that I can walk into your store and use this to buy something that you have that I want. I believe that and I trust that. And we've all agreed on that. So the amount of money available depends on our individual collective faith. That's why they put in God we trust on the dollar bill. The dollar would be more accurate if it said in each other we trust. Okay, they put in God we trust on the dollar bill. But what would have been more accurate? Because this, besides the fact that this is stored energy, and we know that energy is God, we know that God is that spiritual substance, right? What would have been more accurate? rather than making it a godly thing, is in, in each other we trust. That's what this symbolizes, in each other we trust. We trust that wherever we can go in this country, we can use this for exchange. We trust each other. And when we start losing trust in each other, right, then guess what? The supply of this diminishes because people are now hoarding it and less is in circulation. So the dollar bill would be more accurate if it said in each other we trust or in God or in the God in you I trust. I actually like that one better in the God in you I trust, if it is a one-to-one -one transaction. I trust that when I'm ready to redeem my IOU, right, that you will be honor our agreement. In the context of an economy where we are exchanging money with many different creators, we are trusting that God, the God in the people we are doing business with, the citizens of that country, and the law and lo the laws and law enforcement, okay? In the context of an economy where we are exchanging money with many different creators, we are trusting the God and the people we are doing business with, the citizens of that country, and the laws and law enforcement. The more we trust in each other to keep our word, the more we lend and circulate, and the bigger the potential pie can grow for all of us. This is how we grow a collective economy. We trust in each other. That's what it really symbolizes, trust in one another. The U.S. dollar is no longer backed by gold. We are off the gold standard. It is a fiat paper currency that has no real value. Like I said, you cannot eat this. You cannot drink this. You cannot wear this on your body to keep you warm. It has no inherent value and it's no longer backed by gold. What it is backed by is my trust in you and your trust in me. Okay, and when we scale that up on a, uh, on a national level, it's our trust in each other that is the only backing here. And that trust is worth gold. That trust in each other is worth gold. OK, it is essentially monopoly money at this point. Going back to the barter system, we are trusting in each other. Cash is one liquid and measurable representation of money, but it does not encompass all of the world's stored energy. OK, for instance, we know that the physical cash in circulation only represents a fraction of all the world's wealth. Currently, the United States has ninety eight trillion dollars in wealth but only 1.5 trillion worth of current C. And I wrote the word current hyphen C, okay? This is the current that you can see. Money is energy, it's stored energy. It is a current when it is moving. And so only 1.5 trillion is actually in current C, meaning that you can actually see it. But 
98 trillion dollars, but the U.S. has 98 trillion in wealth. So most of the money that exists, you cannot see it, family, because it expands with our trust in each other. The bank loans you money because it trusts, based on who you are and how you showed up and your credit score, that you will pay them back. So they use the money multiplier to multiply their deposits by, uh, by, by uh, 10x because they only have to keep 10% of 10% uh, of the money on hand. So they now multiply, let's say $100,000 is deposited in the bank. The bank has permission to turn that into a million dollars in loans, right? So um, current C, current, you can see in circulation. Your bank is only holding 10% of what you deposit due to the fractional reserve banking system. Even the gross domestic product falls short in measuring money. While the physical money supply of paper and coins is limited, once you add credit, equity, financial derivatives, and cryptocurrency to the equation, the amount of money available becomes limitless. This physical currency is in limited supply, okay? And the Federal Reserve can print more and more and more of it, but it's in limited supply. And we know that it costs more to make a nickel than it, the nickel is worth. It costs more to make a penny than the penny is actually worth. So something is backwards there. You know, did you all know that the Federal Reserve is not a uh, U.S. entity? Did you all know that the Federal Reserve Bank is not a U.S. entity? Just because it has the word federal in it does not make it a U.S. entity. Just go do your research. The Federal Reserve is not a U.S. entity. And it is an external entity controlled by several families that controls our country in many ways. OK, and then there is abundance of untapped spiritual money floating around as potential energy inside of us, ready to be released when the right ideas, individuals and investments come together. Any form of stored energy is money in my mind. Any form of stored energy is money in my mind. You want to know what the greatest currency is, y'all? You want to know where the greatest currency is? The greatest currency is you. It's in your body. That is the greatest form of currency. You remember in the Matrix where they had the people in those little um, those little pods? Why? Because they were sucking the energy out of the bodies. The greatest form of currency is not outside of you or in your bank account. The greatest form of currency is inside of you. And once you become aware of that, then you can say, how can I take this currency, this energy force that is in me, and how can I externalize that and manifest that into my physical reality? Okay? You are the greatest asset there is. You're looking for assets outside of yourself. You want stocks. You want cryptocurrency. You want real estate. You're looking for assets outside of yourself. The greatest asset is you. And if you invest, invest in yourself, if you invest in yourself, you will start to realize that, wow, the greatest return, the greatest return I can get in life is through investing in myself. And then when I reap, when I reap significantly as a result of that, um, Instagram, can y'all still hear me? I had a call come in and started glitching. Okay, cool. So the greatest investment is in yourself. And once you start reaping abundantly by investing in yourself, knowledge of self, right? Coaching, courses, conferences, et cetera. This is how I invest in myself and buying myself time just to be still to do self exploration, you'll see that that is your greatest return. And then when your return is so abundant that you can't invest it all in yourself, then, then that is when you start investing in external things outside of yourself, external assets outside of yourself. Okay. An investment in you is going to get a greater return than the S&P 500. An investment in you, a hundred dollar investment in you, is going to get a greater return through you than by putting it in the S&P 500. Over the past 20 uh over the past 22 years the S&P 500 has only grown by 4.65% on average. That means that on that $100 you only made $4.65. If you invested that $100 into your own mind, into your own self-knowledge and self-awareness, you're going to get a greater return by doing that than investing it in an external asset. Ask me how I know. I've invested more money into myself, okay, since college. Some of you stopped investing in learning after college because you were burned by liberal arts education. 
you were burned by liberal arts education and you're still in debt because of it and you're hoping that you get student loan forgiveness. So at that point, he's like, I spent so much for education and I, it didn't work for me. So I'm stop. I'm going to stop spending money on learning. Do you know I spent more money on coaches, conferences, masterminds, et cetera, since graduating? See, there's liberal arts education, which will cost you. And then there's liberation arts education, which will free you. There's liberal arts education, which will cost you. And then there's liberation arts education, which will free you. And you have to start investing in liberation arts education. Anything that's going to free you mentally, spiritually, and financially, you got to make that investment without hesitation. Without hesitation. Okay? Hesitation is not going after what you want. Hesitation is not going after what you want. Happiness is going after what you want. So guess what? Hesitation is actually the opposite of happiness. So when you hesitate, you're doing the opposite of happiness. You're not going after what you want. Okay? So any form of stored energy is money in my mind. In aggregate, we're either creating money or contracting it through our level of belief in God, ourselves, and each other, and our level of cash consciousness, which we will discuss in commandment number seven. Beyond the Federal Reserve telling uh, the U.S. Treasury to print more money, my belief in God, my God, myself, and what is possible determined whether I started my company on January 9th, 2009 at the bottom of the last recession. My belief in my ability to grow my company is what frees me to invest in rental properties and commit to 30-year mortgages. At the level of wealth I am now, I even occasionally spend money with no expectation of a return just to circulate it. Just to circulate it. Because I know that it has no use when it is just sitting still. Belief has no limits. Therefore, money has no limits. It is only limited by how much we believe in ourselves, each other, and God in aggregate. Even though there are numbers on bills and we do our best to measure GDP and keep score with our bank accounts, money can't be quantified. The dollar value goes up and down daily, but the quantity of money corresponds to what we believe is possible in the quantum field where all things are possible. What does scripture say? All things are possible. Okay? All things are possible. And our scripture at the beginning of this section was money is the answer to everything from Ecclesiastes 10, 19. So that is, um, that is the end. Now we're going to get into the E. We're going to get into the E. Energy. Money is energy. We're understanding money's nature. What is money is the title of this section. Money is a store of value or the energy used to create that value. As mentioned earlier, the IOU uh, stored all of the six forms of capital. And we're going to get to that in money commandment number eight. I used to produce, I, I used to produce the 20 ripe apples for you to enjoy. Okay. Our older, uh, our older reference was um, I had a hundred apples and you had one cow. You wanted 20 apples and I did not want 20% of your cow. And so we created this piece of paper called money saying you owe me the equivalent of 20 uh, 20 percent of a cow when i'm ready to redeem it okay so that is what we're referencing here for those of you who are just joining us for the first time so as mentioned earlier the iou stored all of the six forms of capital i use to produce the 20 ripe apples for you to enjoy now however capital doesn't become currency until it is in motion okay capital doesn't become currency until it is in motion in motion when you are saving money your money is not in motion when you are saving money, it is not in motion. And this is why it yields the lowest. Did you all know that cash is the lowest yielding asset in the entire world? Cash is the lowest yielding asset in the entire world. You've been taught to paper chase and trade your most valuable thing, which is time, for money. But cash is actually the lowest yielding asset in the entire world at 0.03% in your bank account. Okay? Money wants to have a current just like water. Water is almost always moving. In nature, where have you seen water sitting still? With the exception of a swamp, water is always moving, okay? Its nature is to be in motion, the same for money. Energy and circulation grow economies. When money is hoarded and still, economies turn into swamps and all of the negative growth and fungi that come with those environments. When money is in motion and in circulation and has a strong current, the economy experiences positive growth and abundance, hence the terminology cash flow. Cash with a positive flow is called positive cash flow. 
That is what we are looking for. Positive cash flow and preferably passively. Slim, similar to water, money flows along the path of least resistance. See, for a long time, I used to affirm the struggle is real, right? I don't use that language pattern anymore. I don't use that language pattern anymore, okay? One second. I'm here a little bit early because uh, I'm, I'm traveling, teaching, telling my little brother I'm teaching. Be down in a second. All right. I came on a little early today because I'm traveling family, um, but normally we're going to be at 8.30. I came on a little early today because I'm traveling, but normally we're going to be on at 8.30. Uh, we start at 8.30, but today I started early just to get it in so we didn't miss a day. Okay? So let me finish this because he's downstairs. Okay. Similar to water, money flows along the path of least resistance and fills receivers, listen to this very carefully, and fills receivers according to the volume of their value. So if you're wondering why you don't have much money, it's because the volume of your value is small. If you ask yourself, how much value have I created for other people, the volume or the receptacle which you are receiving in, like this cup right here, some people have a cup of this size and some people have a Dixie cup, okay? So you will be poured into according to the volume of your value. In the same way that a river simply goes around a rock, money will go around you. In the same way that, uh, in the same way that a river simply goes around a rock, money will go around you. Many people have a love-hate relationship with money because they identify themselves as givers and not receivers. This is for all my givers out there, and I know a lot of you are, and I, I know that uh, we need to develop this muscle. You developed your muscle of giving, now you need to develop your muscle of receiving because in order to give more, you have to learn how to receive more, okay? Um, many people have a love-hate relationship with money because they identify themselves as givers, not receivers but that is because they never open themselves up to receive back. The greatest givers are great receivers. I know some of you pride yourself in being givers. Listen to me. The greatest givers are great receivers. It has to be reciprocal because if you only give, 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 and you never receive, it will cut off your ability to give sustainably. By giving first, you have created the space to receive if you are open to receiving if you are open to receiving, that's a key word. The universe abhors a vacuum. Nature requires that every space be filled. So when you create value for others, nature can't help but pour back into you because of the value vacuum you've made. It is how energy works. And since money is just stored energy, it abides by similar universal laws. All right, now we're getting into why, yeast. Interesting word, but you understand what I mean by yeast when I'm done with this. We have a page and a half left, family. Money is yeast. Yeast increases the yield of what is what it is added to, most notably bread, which happens to be another name for money. Listen, y'all you heard that? Money is yeast. Yeast increases the yield of what it is added to, most notably bread, which happens to be another name for money. Yeast is an ingredient that causes the dough to expand and feed more people when added to the dough. In the same way, when money is added to an asset with potential like a business, real estate, or a talented individual or group, it can cause the investment to expand and become more valuable while also producing more money. So money is yeast. It is an ingredient we can add to things that we believe have expansive abilities, okay? In the same way, that seed yields crops, money likes to yield creations. When you know that money is energy and wants to be used like yeast to increase the yield of something, you seek to circulate your money to the places with the highest potential material and spiritual harvest, okay? This is where we circulate our money towards. Not, I'm not just saying go out there and circulate money um, uh, without thought. You circulate your money to the places with the highest potential material and spiritual harvest, all right? In the past 20 years, right? January 1st to 2000 to December 31st, 2020, the S&P 500 stock market index yielded an average rate of return of 4.77%. So for those of you who have your money in the stock market, you only got a 4.77% yield over the past 20 years. That's not that great, okay? Single family real estate appreciates at about 3% per year. Actually, it's 26 
multifamily real estate investments should produce at least a 12% annual, uh, at least 12% annually, and savings accounts are only yielding at 0.03% interest. Cash is the lowest yielding asset in the world. Yet that's what you've been taught to chase. You've been taught to chase the lowest yielding asset in the world. Okay. You have two jobs. Your first job is to work for money. Your second job, which most people fail at, is to make money work for you. Okay. So you're doing great at the working hard for money part, but many of you are failing right now, right? Or let me, I don't want to say failing, have opportunity for growth in terms of making your money work for you. The name of it, the, the name of the game is to increase its yield, its growth, and its good. The name of the game is to increase its yield, its growth, and its good. Last two paragraphs. The goal is to have higher yields. Yield is known as cash on cash return or your return on investment, which is ROI. The equation for cash on cash return equals the annual profits of an investment divided by the initial investment. A simple example is a kid using $40 to buy Dixie cups, ice water, ice, water, lemons, sugar, a marker, and poster board to create a lemonade stand, and then selling 100 cups at, uh, at $1 each. The profit was $60, which you get by subtracting the $40 in expenses from the $100 in revenues. $60 profit divided by the initial $40 investment equals 1.5 or 150% cash on cash return. This is some math for millionaires. I know you learned a lot of math in high school, junior high school, high school, and in college, but the only math that matters to your wealth is what I call math for millionaires. And we're going to go through some of those equations throughout the book. You don't have to know any complex things. There's no derivatives here. Very little algebra here. This is really junior high school. Math for millionaires is really junior high school math, okay? And so th that knowing cash on cash return, knowing how to calculate the yield, the return on investment is equation that you need to know, okay? So um, we'll explore that further in commandment number seven. Last paragraph. It takes money to make money. Money loves to be used to create things that create value for others. When you do so, you will be rewarded with multiples of what you started with. In a sense, you want to give so much value to the world and create such a great value vacuum that the universe can't help but pour back into you so that, listen, not pour back into you just so you can kick your feet up and do nothing. Pour back into you so that you can keep giving your gift. When I receive, right, I pour back into myself and into my business, which allows me to expand and give my gift at a greater scale. That is the goal. It is not just for me to look at a bank balance and say, oh, I have a lot of money. Okay. And we'll explain why that is later. You cannot outgive God. So your volume vacuum will be filled when you are aligned with the universal laws and God's will. Your yield is simply the byproduct of helping others get what they want. Your yield is simply the byproduct of helping others get what they want. The more you give, the more you shall receive. Your blessing model allows you to give and your business model is what allows you to receive more and more over time continuously. Together, they clarify what you have, what you give, to whom, and how much you receive so that you can continue to offer more. We will go into uh, the blessing model and business model in more detail in commandment number seven. And now that you understand what money is and how it works, it will be easier to attract it. OK, so that concludes our section on um, what does money want? Uh, what is money? Um, tomorrow, 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to continue with what what does money want? OK, we're going to continue with that section on page 12 tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't got the book, please um, go to moneyandmanifestation.com. That's moneyandmanifestation.com. I pinned it there and that will uh, send you to a page where you can buy the book. I'm letting you know the book is $100, okay? This is not some $10 book. This book is thick. It took six months to write, waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning um, to bring it forth, to give birth to it. And, um, and it's going to make you way more than $100. Now, when you buy the book at $100, I'm letting you know you get five copies. Why would I give you five copies? Because I'm immediately going to put you in a state of circulation to stimulate your personal economy immediately. So you're going to have four other books to give away to stimulate your personal economy. We don't have to wait for a stimulus check from the government. You can stimulate your own personal economy simply by giving. If you feel stuck right now financially, go give. 
See, most people, when they feel stuck financially, they're looking to receive from somebody. But guess what? If you just go give from what you have, recognizing one, that you have something to give, put you in a state of abundance. Oh, I do have something to give. I have gifts. I have talents. I have this. I have that. That puts you in a state of abundance when you recognize that I actually have something to give. So then when you go give that thing, now you start to st stimulate your personal economy. We're not waiting for the government to stimulate our economy with a stimulus check. Okay? Now you are relying on an outside entity when you have the ability to kickstart your own personal economy. Okay? So you can go get the book at moneymanifestation.com. You do not have to. This is not, I'm not, I don't, I don't need to sell this book. I, I, I need to get this information into your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I need to get this information to your mind. I don't need to sell the book. So I'll be reading it here for absolutely free daily till we get through it. Um, this book is 400 and 405 pages. So that means we're probably going to be reading this for the next 81 days together. We're reading about five pages a day. So this should take us all the way through February. All right. So uh, with that, um, I, I wish you all the best. I need to get on this road right now. Again, I came in early today. I started at eight today because I have uh, I got to get on the road right now. Um, but normally we'll be here at 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please, please, please um, set a phone alarm, set a phone alarm and label it Read Rich and Righteous. And we'll be here on Instagram and YouTube uh, every single day. Um, with the exception of maybe some holidays and, and weekends. So every single weekday, uh, we'll be here at 8.30 a.m. reading this book, all right? Again, it's Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets and Mastering Money Manifestation in Your Mind. Um, I pray that this session blessed you, and I will talk to you all tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? Uh, the recording will be on Instagram and my YouTube channel, um, and all of those links are in my Instagram bio, all right? The link to buy the book is pinned at the top, and uh, uh, we'll get those into the mail, uh, all five into the mail for you. Oh, you also get the Rituals Workbook with it as well. You also get one copy of the Rituals Workbook, which are exercises that you do along with each section. All right. All right. We are. Uh, what's up, Alo? Uh, we are on page. We will be on page 12 tomorrow. We're going to page 12 tomorrow. We just finished the introduction and the first section. And now we'll, we'll be on page 12 tomorrow. All right. Much love, y'all. Catch you later. Peace.